If you're an actor that grows up in Australia, you're basically looking to do anything that will pay the rent. Action! Five on the set. We're gonna take a, a look back at the character and your, 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 your history with the character, so I wanna start at the very beginning. Mm -hmm. How well do you remember going into audition and that experience? Very well. I was an actor who got into a musical a little bit as a surprise to me. And then all of a sudden I was getting offered a lot of musicals. So I was keen to head off into film and went for this audition with a perm in my hair. I was playing Curly in Oklahoma. So yeah, it was uh, kind of a miracle that I ever got a call back, to be honest. That was for Curly, that wasn't for... It wasn't life, no. <laughs> this is not that far back. The perm was definitely long gone. But no, this was, I was playing Curly um, in Oklahoma. I turned up with a baseball cap on. And of course the casting director said, ah, you need to take your cap off. And I'm like, I think that's a good idea. <laughs> and I took it off and they went, okay, let's just film it. So I did get the call back with the, um, how about losing the perm <laughs> and the Southern cowboy accent. <laughs> I mean, Wolverine's no small part in that movie. And so right. for it to be like the I, missing I, piece. I didn't know how big the part was really. I'd never seen a script at this point. I'd seen four pages that I was testing. And I had never read an X-Men comic. And it was when I got, I remember when I got the part, I happened to be going in to see my agent and I just remember this, I think this is really odd. I just remember one guy down the hall going, Wolverine, I was like, <laughs> this just doesn't feel like I got a job, like this is not, this is no ordinary part. So you get the role, Were you, did you have any, any reservations at that point or did you have any reason to question it? No, because this was, well, first of all, Brian Singer, I was a big fan of his movies, you know, Usual Suspect, and I was like, this guy's got a real point of view and he's, very interesting, but bottom line, Ian McKellen and Patrick Stewart, to me, growing up in Australia drama school, watching the John Barton tapes on Shakespeare, they were the De Niro and Pacino for me. And I was like, those guys are my heroes. I actually remember thinking one day, I hope I'm in a movie or on a in a stage production with one of those guys. My wife, not so much. She was like, oh, you can't do this. This is ridiculous. <laughs> I said, babe, I'm gonna have an audition. She goes, Hugh, you got claws coming out of your hands. I said, you're at the Royal National Theatre. What, what are you doing, claws coming out of your hands? And I said, wow, I'll just give it a go. So yeah, I mean, the only time she's ever been wrong, I might, let me add, the only time, but she will admit. Do you have to hold that over Deb's head at any point? Just, just like once a day, but not more than that. It's not healthy for a relationship, I think, Kevin. What was that first movie like when you look back on it now? Does it seem like a quainter time or? You know, it could have been a $3 million movie or a $100 million movie. When you do your first Hollywood movie, it, it's an experience you can't ever take away. It was a first for me. It was my third movie ever, but it was my first Hollywood movie and it was like being shot out of a cannon. Ooh.